classical guitar finger picks. Is that even allowed? Can you play classical guitar without nails and still get that natural nail sound using finger picks? Well, it might be controversial in the world of classical guitar to even bring up the idea of finger picks, but the answer to both of those questions is definitely yes. And I'm going to show you how in this Alaska pick review video. I'm going to share with you my experience of using these finger picks that are called Alaska picks. I used them exclusively playing professionally, making a living playing guitar for about 10 years. I will explain and demonstrate the technique needed to be able to use these effectively. It's, it's pretty specific and it's really hard to get used to, but it is very possible. Then I'll demonstrate some music for you using the Alaska picks on a couple different guitars and several different pieces of music so you can hear the end result of what it can sound like once you get used to the technique of using these finger picks. And lastly, we will just run down a pros and cons list as a summary about using classical guitar finger picks versus is nails. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar lesson topics, music theory, mapping out the fretboard, arranging for guitar, solo guitar technique, improvisation, jazz, all these various topics, all designed to help us get more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely and effectively. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when I put out new lessons. So on this channel, on a lot of my videos, I get comments where people ask, what the heck are those things on your fingers? Or can you explain what finger picks you're using and what's the deal with those? So that's why I'm doing this video. So I've tried so many things with different right hand techniques on the guitar because I play uh, several different styles of guitar. I don't only play classical guitar and I don't only play electric guitar. And I've always been experimenting with how to uh, kind of unify my right hand technique. Uh, for a long time, I was committed to using these Alaska picks on the classical guitar and then also as a hybrid technique with the electric guitar as well. Um, over the last several years, I went back to using my nails for nylon string guitar for classical guitar. And then uh, just recently, about four months ago or so, I switched over to playing just with the fingertips, no nails at all, just the skin of my fingers uh, doing classical guitar classical guitar that way, which I will do a video about next week, what that experience was like. But before that, I was committed to these Alaska picks. So we're going to talk about them as a solution to getting a very nail worthy sound on the cl classical guitar that I think is pretty legit, uh, but it takes uh, some patience and some technique um, and some intentionality behind it. And so let's talk about what I mean by that. And just to emphasize one more time, you can get a legit sound with these. I played professionally, I played weddings, I played gigs, did recordings, did, you know, played um, recitals. I spent uh, the second two years of my four years in college majoring in classical guitar performance uh, using these finger picks. And I was, I'm grateful that uh, my professor, Michael Partington, who's a fantastic guitarist, uh, just look him up on uh, Spotify or whatever you listen to music. He has a bunch of albums out there. Just put that, put his music on um, just wonderful recordings out there by Michael Partington. Um, so check him out and listen to that. Uh, but I'm grateful that he was open-minded enough to let me use these finger picks for the second two years of my college ed education on the classical guitar. Because at the time I was also studying jazz and playing a lot of uh, the Telecaster and electric guitar. And again, like I said, trying to kind of figure out um, how to make sense of, of these various techniques. Nails were kind of getting ripped up on the steel strings. And uh, also I just had kind of weak nails and I wasn't super happy with the tone that I was getting with my nails, even when my nails were at their best. And if you've been working with nails on classical guitar, you understand how much of a challenge it is. So pretty soon after getting used to these and trying these picks out and adapting a little bit, I was already happier with the sound, getting kind of a more robust sound uh, than I was and, and more of a projected um, stronger sound than I was with my natural nails. And I was really happy with that. And that's why I just kind of committed to it and got really comfortable with playing with these. So the Alaska picks come in various sizes. They have extra large, large, medium, and small. And the sizes that I use is I use an extra large on my thumb. And I sometimes play without the thumb. We're going to talk about options for um, different combinations of how to use these finger picks. But let's say you want to pretend you're kind of simulating having a nice big thick nail on your four fingers, including the thumb, that we kind of traditionally use for classical guitar. So I use an extra large on my thumb, and then I use a large, large, and large. So extra large, 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 large. And then I will use the pinky when I'm playing um, a hybrid technique on electric guitar, and I'll use a medium size 
on that for my hand size. I did used to use a small there, but it was just kind of squeezing too much and, and um, being uncomfortable. So you'll find your own settings, your own sizes if you want to go for this and kind of experiment around. So if you look up Alaska picks and look at how to use them, a lot of times you'll see that people recommend cutting them and then um, and shaping them. I've never cut mine. I've never clipped them. So you'll see demonstrations of that. And, um, you know, I, I haven't done that. So um, I can't necessarily say you shouldn't, but that's not what I've done. But you do definitely, definitely have to uh, polish them and shape them a little bit. Um, you don't necessarily have to shape them as much as just smooth them out because they will be rough. They will not sound good until you do that. So the same way that you shape your nails, you would just use a, a file and shape this. And I actually just go straight to the nail paper. This is kind of classical guitar nail paper, 500 grade. Um, basically, it's just sandpaper, 500 grade. And uh, that's usually what's used for uh, polishing nails. I just treat it exactly like I have these monster nails on here. Everything about these, you want to kind of pretend that they're just your natural nails because that's how we're going to get the natural nail sound that we actually want um, and in the end you should be able to fool someone and and play a recording of you playing and they won't say hey why is your why is your tone super weird um, it it just should sound like nails there are a little bit of differences we're going to talk about that but uh, you want to you want to shape these just like this so exactly like you would polished nails. And again, I'm not really shaping them. I am just polishing them, making sure they're smooth, kind of checking the same way you would with nails, checking against the string, all of that stuff. As you play, you'll kind of hear maybe some rough edges and you go back and, and do that again. The way they fit on your finger is that they are intended to go slightly under your nail. Now, I barely have any nail at all to do that with because like I just said, I, I play now on my fingertips, so I keep them as short as possible. But um, even as short as possible, they're still able to stay on with just a little bit. Can you see that? Let's go to this camera. Little bit of hooking under the nail. So if you have if you have some nail, it'll they'll go over that end piece of the Alaska pick, and that's how they'll, they'll stay on very firm. They will be very firm, and um, that is one of the things that distinguishes these picks from other finger picks that your nail actually goes over them so they're super super um, locked in they don't budge because if they budged that wouldn't be like what your nail does your nail is connected to you so um, uh, some other finger picks are a little looser because they don't go under your nail like that so like i said you just treat them exactly like you have monster nails on so let's look at the right hand technique here the if you're familiar with playing with nails uh, then you know that you need to plant your finger where you are touching the flesh of your finger and the nail at the same time, and then you pluck off. So these are no exception, of course, uh, and it's actually that you have to be even more careful. You have to be so, so, so careful, because otherwise it, these are very kind of clunky. They will click around. They will feel, they feel very, very cumbersome. But if you are very careful and are diligent about your right hand technique in the way that um, classical guitar, uh, the tradition of playing with the classical mm -hmm. guitar with the right hand, if we do that, but just even um, extra more vigilant, then you'll get a good sound. So you're going to plant with your, uh, your right hand finger, you're touching the flesh and the nail, I'll just call it the nail, okay? And you plant like this so you can see nail and, and flesh at the same time. Great sound, I'm really happy with that sound. So planting, preparing for a second and then plucking is the secret to right hand classical guitar technique. Really just right hand finger style playing at all because that's what allows us to get to, to know, okay, I, I know what this feels like right here. I know what the tone is gonna be. I can control it. So as long as I'm careful, I'm getting a really good sound. As I speed up, you start to hear some of those clicks and that's what we have to um, be really on there. That thin sound is very possible. So we have to really be um, on, uh, on high alert for that. And then when you're playing on the top strings, you know, it's very common. This is the same with nails. You have this kind of angle. You're not playing straight on, right? So you're playing at a little bit of an angle. And then as you play on the lower strings, you get a little straighter. Because if you play at that angle, 
you get this scrape. Right, so on the lower strings, you're plucking a little more straight on. Listen to that clicking this. Right? If we don't plant properly, where the flesh kind of touches the string first, and then there, that, that zip happens. So that's what will be, just warning you, that's going to be extremely frustrating. So be patient. That, that's why the, most people that try the, using these picks give up almost immediately because they're like, whoa, how could anyone ever do this? But it's totally possible. You just have to be extra, extra careful. So before I just demonstrate some music with these, I'll just say that the way to work on this is to do something that I call the calibration exercise. And any right hand technique you're using, you can do this calibration exercise. You're gonna go up and down all the strings with your thumb. And just listen for how consistent is it? Am I planting every time? Is it exactly the sound that I want? Do I have control over it? Then you do every string up and down with the eye finger. Notice how I'm planting and I'm listening for and paying attention to, am I hearing any of those clicks that I don't want? Okay, then you do all the M finger, then you do all the A finger. Okay, then you do every combination. You do uh, P for the thumb, P, I, oh, see, hear that? Great example. <laughs> Great example where the picks, because they're wrapped around your finger, you're gonna touch a string with the thumb, either that's below, or you're gonna touch a string that's above with the other fingers. So um, that is one of the, Ex that's exactly what we have to get used to um, the potential of happening. So P, I, P, I, P, I, and that's why the calibration exercise exists. I'll do this every time I'm warming up for the right hand. Okay, then you do P, M, P, M, and you go up and down. Okay, until you feel like you're getting it all settled, then P, I, P, A, and then you do every other combination. A, you do I, P, I, P, I, P, and then you do I, M, I am, and I'm rushing through it here, right? If I'm doing it, I'll meditate on this for a while if I'm practicing this. If you heard me doing this, just ask yourself right now, would you think that it's anything other than just someone playing classical guitar uh, exercise with the open strings, right? It's nothing that sounds When I get it the way I want it to, it's exactly the nail sound I want. And like I said already, it's better than the nail sound that I was able to get when I was using natural nails. Let me just demonstrate some music now. So those are some examples of classical guitar repertoire using the Alaska picks. I'll also use them on other styles and other types of guitars, uh, like a steel string guitar. Just a finger picking style is really nice. The technique is the same. You gotta just be 
you're using a classical guitar technique with whatever style you play, but it works really nicely on a steel string guitar, which natural nails don't because they're, it's going to mess up your nails and uh, kind of mess with the tone you can get on the nylon string guitar because it rips them up a little bit, but not these. As long as you come back and polish them again with the nail paper, you're, you're fine to use them on a steel string guitar. And I also used the Alaska picks with the electric guitar, but I very rarely would use the thumb pick with that. Sometimes I would, but mostly I would take that off and then just have these three on. And then the thumb is kind of a clean skin tone that really cleans it up and makes it less cumbersome and less bulky and less likely to be so clicky because the strings are closer together and it's just way harder. So I also don't need that kind of nail sound for the, for the classical guitar. I really want that pure nail sound, but this works quite nicely for finger style on electric, especially for like a jazz style. But for anything, finger style, normal chords as well. So I was on a kind of a search to get the a, a unified right hand technique like I mentioned already. So what I would do for a long time, I would actually do this for classical guitar as well. And I could have the, the thumbnail there because I could play with or without that. Um, on the electric guitar and then I would have these three and then I would use this as a pick so I Haven't done that for a long time But I would use this one up and down So I was try trying to demonstrate that there and I haven't done that in a very long time, but um, I could go into single note playing with this and then go into finger style and kind of just feel like everything is available. Um, I stopped doing that eventually because I was just experimenting with more ways of playing and the tone was very limited. It was mostly recording projects that made me realize that like, oh, sometimes I actually just want um, different types of sounds that maybe a pick is going to be useful for. But um, but it is a cool thing. I mean, I did that for many years um, and it, it was really handy. And lastly, I'm going to demonstrate how I use the Alaska picks for hybrid picking where I'm holding a pick with these two fingers and then I put a medium sized one on my pinky and then I really can get that clean pick sound, which I wasn't able to get with that um, eye finger pick as, as you can kind of hear the difference there. And then on, on the top, I can get some finger style playing, include some chords. Still has that potential to click around. So that's a lot. Let's just go over a quick pros and cons list here just to kind of summarize everything about these Alaska picks. Pro number one, they sound really good if you get used to them. If you're patient, if you take that time, if you're very careful, they can sound super, super good, super clean, super consistent, and totally legitimate for classical guitar or any other finger style. Pro number two, the options for the tone color that you can get with them are pretty wide actually. You can get a very warm sound and you have to be very careful for that, but the Ponticello sound is incredible. The brightness that you can get by going over towards the bridge when playing on the classical guitar um, is you can just dig in and get an amazing projected Ponticello sound and I love that about it. It's very expressive and I'm feeling that especially right now because I switched over to playing with just my fingertips, which I'm going to talk about next in my next video, um, and you don't have that range of tone color. So that's something I really appreciate about those picks. Pro number three, they are loud. They project. You can play quietly, but if you want to dig in, you can really project and you have quite a bit of a dynamic range to work with. 
Pro number four, the obvious one, you don't have to worry about your nails. If nails are troubling or you have uh, your work that you do doesn't allow you to really keep your nails or you like to go rock climbing or you play the piano, you know, so many reasons um, that just having to deal with having perfect, perfect nails just to play some classical guitar, um, it really can get in our way. So huge, huge benefit of the Alaska Picks uh, as finger picks for classical guitar is that you don't have to have nails. Okay, the cons list. It's bigger, but it doesn't mean that it outweighs the pros. Con number one for the Alaska Picks is they're just crazy hard to get used to. And I'm just glad that you're hearing me say that because if you want to try these, just be patient and get through that because most people will quit using them just because they're so, it just feels like they're impossible at first, but they aren't. They aren't, and that's why I wanted to demonstrate all these examples for you. So they're just really take time to get used to, and they take patience, and you really need to understand what, what the proper classical guitar technique is to use if you had monster nails. If you had really monster nails, it is the same kind of technique, and just be extra careful. Con number two, even after you get used to them and you're using them and you're super warmed up and, and it's all calibrated, they're just clicky for lack of a better word they're just they're gonna still click sometimes and nails will too but these will just a little more than that and so if you super dial in your na your nail playing it's possible to get that really warm and eliminate clicks um and if you super dial in the alaska picks um you're just you're gonna get more clicks you're gonna get more but a very dialed in alaska pick playing versus someone who doesn't quite have the nail technique um totally calibrated or warmed up to it um, is is better, right? So someone's um, s someone's nail playing that uh, is not quite at the full clean level, and then your cleanest version of Alaska Picks is definitely still way better. And a lot of people are playing. You'll hear a lot of nail sounds in all kinds of classical guitar playing. So that's not that doesn't rule them out, but that is going to happen. Con number three they just add weight to your fingers so they slow you down so if you're trying to work on some segovia scales and get your speed get your speed um compared to playing just with your nails it uh it definitely slows you down it's harder to get some speed going with certain techniques when you have the alaska picks on your fingers con number four it's not as intimate you ha you have something on your fingers it's not just you and your nail and your finger kind of getting to be in touch with the instrument you have this extra plastic thing on your finger. So just a little bit of a disconnection there that, that you can potentially feel. Con number five is just the fact that you have this, another accessory, you, know, you have to you have to carry something around, you have to have it, you have to put it on and off, um, this extra thing. Though I would say that that's not any more of um, a negative or, or any more cumbersome than having actual nails. That's just having actual nails stuck to your fingers is almost worse than if you could just take them off and you have to carry them around. Con number six, I haven't mentioned this yet, but because of the thumbnail, if you're using the thumbnail, you cannot mute a bass note with the back of your thumb, which is a normal classical guitar technique to do. To When you play like the open A string and you need to mute the open E string that you just played, recently you often play it with the side of your thumb or mute it with the side of your thumb. You cannot do that with the Alaska picks because it'll it'll just click. It's just not possible. So in some ways this can be a blessing in disguise though because it will force you to mute by hopping over uh, and muting it with the front kind of planting area of your thumb, which is actually a really important technique to be able to do as well, because we have to do that to mute bass notes that are higher strings. So I found that that was actually really good for my technique that I, when I was playing with the Alaska picks, that I couldn't mute with the side of the thumb, the bass notes, and I had to hop to everything. And that's how I ended up getting that technique down. And the final con, the final negative of using these Alaska picks as finger picks for classical guitar playing is just that they can be uncomfortable. If you're wearing them for like, an hour and a half practice session or something, they can squeeze on your fingers and, and cause some discomfort. They also will create some calluses on the side of your fingers by kind of squeezing there. But that's why it's important to play with the sizes. Um, that's why I use three larges here and an extra large here. That's pretty comfortable now, but I used to use a medium on this A finger. I don't know why that A finger is not necessarily smaller than these other two, but it really squeezed on that and it was quite uncomfortable, kind of cutting, cutting off some circulation potentially, uh, creating calluses and just kind of being sore 
after I took them off. I don't think that's a huge problem if you get the right sizes on, uh, but that is just another potential negative. If you want some free sheet music to play with, I have a free solo guitar arrangement pack PDF. You can grab that with a link in the description. Right now there's only two pieces in there, but I have a big project uh, coming up where I'm gonna add a bunch to it. And if you anybody who downloads it, I'll end up sending you the updated versions um, later on. So there's gonna be a bunch of cool arrangements of tunes in there. Right now it's just a classical guitar solo guitar arrangement of Happy Birthday. And then there's a uh, chord melody solo guitar arrangement of Fly Me to the Moon. So both really cool uh, pieces of music in there. And then I'm gonna be adding to it in the future, but that's totally free. You can grab that with the link in the description. So question for you, I know that this is a controversial topic. And I know that there are purists out there who might say, oh my gosh, never, are you are you insane for even trying to use finger picks for classical guitar? Uh, and so where do you land on this? Uh, uh, you know, maybe you're doubtful. I mean, you made it this far in the video, so you're probably not gonna hate on me in the comments, but um, if you totally disagree, or if you think this is a, is sacrilegious uh, to the, to the uh, world of classical guitar, put it in the comments. Let's have a conversation about that. Um, or maybe you're all for it and you've been looking for a solution. Either way, wherever you land on this, uh, let me know in the comments. And I super appreciate all the comments on this channel. Thank you so much. That really helps me know that I'm on the right track with helping you with your guitar goals and your musical journey. So I just wanna feature a comment here on my video about how to arrange your own chord melodies on the guitar. Special thanks to Can Upsilon forgive me for potentially pronouncing the name wrong, um, they commented and said, your lessons are the best I've ever seen on YouTube, easy to follow, very instructive, and with lots of insight. I really, really appreciate that. If you wanna see that video about how to create your own chord melodies, how to arrange a melody and play the chords and the melody at the same time, I'll put a link to that video in the description. And if you genuinely like this Alaska pick review and this video on the potential for classical guitar finger picks, please hit that like button. That super helps out the channel and it helps other people find the lessons that they're looking for so they can keep progressing on the guitar. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week, like I already said, I'm gonna talk about how I transitioned to playing classical guitar with just the skin of my fingertips. And now I'm super committed to that. It's been quite a transition and a journey, kind of figuring it out. The technique is different, the sound is different, but I'm in love with it now. And I'll also talk about the history of playing classical guitar without nails, with the fingertips, because it used to be quite common and it's kind of died out now. So that'll be a cool lesson next week. I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, take care, and happy practicing.